Welcome to the first episode of No Overtime. On our show, we will be discussing news from the NFL, NBA, and MLB. I'm Jake Goodman, joined by Michael Cantilli, and today we will be discussing a recap of Week 3 and some insights and predictions into Week 4 of the NFL season. All right, so for our first segment, we're going to be talking about some predictions we have for Week 4 of the NFL. Mm -hmm. So starting with the first game, we have Broncos at Jets. So... I personally have the Jets there, you know. They're coming off a great win. They're on They're on a little bit of a hot streak here, you know. What's your opinion? Yeah, I'm going to be at this game, and I think um, the way we win this game is on the ground. They, they have a good secondary, and I think that Rodgers may not look himself, especially against like guys like Pat Sertan. So I think Brees Hall is going to have a huge game. Yeah, definitely. Um, the next game we have are the Eagles at the Buccaneers. I personally have the Buccaneers here because, you know, they're coming off a, uh, a tough loss where Baker Mayfield didn't play that great. But, mm -hmm. you know, any given week he can have a, a crazy good week and, you know, he can totally – he can be a total game changer. Yeah, right now Baker Mayfield looks like he was an MVP candidate for the first two weeks. But after that just awful loss versus Denver, I just don't see them beating a good Philadelphia team. I think I got the Eagles in this one. All right, so then the Saints at the Falcons. I, I got the Falcons here. You know, uh, they look great. You know, people were doubting them after week one. You know, they look they look fantastic. You know, mm -hmm. like Bijan and Kirk, you know, they, they, they really just complement each other. They look great out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both teams look very good. I will say that. Um, I also have the Falcons. I think the Saints um, start off very hot. I think they're going to come down to earth now. And I think Derek Carr is going to play like his usual self. It's a good Falcons defense, so I think they're going to find a way to stop them. Yeah, and then the Seahawks are at the Lions. Um, I have the Lions, you know. Uh, I think th th they've had, like, not the best start they could have to the season so far. You know, yeah. they, they, they're just trying to put all the pieces together, kind of do what they did last season. Mm -hmm. um, who, do you, who do you have? Yeah, the Seahawks have definitely looked like the better team this year, but I think i got to go with the Lions. I mean, we saw how they did last year, and I just think they're going to kind of get it together. they got to – throw Sam Laporte the ball, and I think they're just going to have a really good offense. This should be a high-scoring game. Yeah. And then the uh, the Bills are going to be at the Ravens, and I have the Bills. You know, Josh Allen mm -hmm. is arguably the best player in the league right now, mm -hmm. and, you know, the Bills just look great. They, lay, they look like the best team in the league, and I think the Ravens have struggled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, before, before the Monday night game, I had the Ravens in this one, but after the way Josh Allen just completely killed the Jaguars, I think i got to take the Bills – over the Ravens, you know, the Ravens defense hasn't looked that good this year. Josh Allen looks like an MVP front runner. And I think this is also gonna be a high scoring game, but the Bills win by a touchdown. All right, so my upset, upset game of the week is gonna be the Panthers upsetting the Bengals. You know, I think mm -hmm. Andy Dalton, like he he really has changed that offense for them. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think they could be not a, a playoff team, obviously not yet, but they are definitely a much better team than they were. Mm -hmm. And for my upset game, I have the Colts beating the Steelers. Anthony Richardson hasn't looked that good this year, but I think he's going to pick it up. I think the Steelers are a bit of a fraudulent team to be 3-0. and I mean, Justin Fields, I think all it takes is a couple of interceptions, and the Colts just need to get two or three touchdowns. It's probably going to be a low-scoring game, but I think if Richardson doesn't throw too many interceptions and kind of keeps it on the ground, they could win this game. Um, our next segment is were the Panthers right for benching Bryce Young? I mean, you know, Bryce Young, the first the first overall pick in last mm -hmm. in last year's draft. And I think, you know, it's it's not it's not a good idea to I feel like I feel like to throw a rookie quarterback, you know, into a, a situation like the Panthers. They yeah. had like they had a terrible offense and they threw him in and you know, people were kind of expecting him to do well and like you can't do well when you have no NFL experience, you're on a bad team. Mm -hmm. And and obviously the these first two games he's just looked horrible and it's it's not been a good time for him. Yeah, it's not often you see a first overall pick get benched this early into their career. But before Dal before Dalton's performance, I thought this was the wrong decision. I'm a big Bryce Young believer. Um, I mean, we could say that he didn't have a good surrounding, but after Dalton just put up over, they put up 36 points against a good Raiders defense. Deontay Johnson looked good. Chuba Hubbard looked good. He kind of brought this whole offense back alive. And honestly, looking back on it, I don't think they're going to turn back. I think Dalton is going to start for the rest of the season. So it was the right decision, unfortunately. Yeah, I agree. Dalton has looked, he looked great. Three touchdowns. Three touchdown passes. Um, so last week, 
week three, the Jets had a big win over the Patriots. Mm-hmm. They absolutely destroyed them mm-hmm. on both sides of the ball. Uh, what are your thoughts kind of on that game? So, yeah, a big uh, problem for the Jets was time of possession. Uh, you know, in their first two games, I think versus the 49ers, they only had like 20 minutes times of time of possession. But versus the Patriots, they had over 40. So that's just what won them the game. They limited, limited them to only a field goal. So I think our defense coming alive is really what's going to help us. Yeah. And then also for the Patriots, I think they're a good team. You know, they beat the Bengals in week one. Uh, I think Drake may could start and they could still win some games. Uh, moving on to our segment for top performers. I mean, the guy who looked the best this week, Jawan Jennings, putting up 11 receptions, 175 yards, and three touchdowns. What are your thoughts on that performance? I mean, you know, he, I felt like he was Brock Purdy's one of only his only uh, weapon. One, really. yeah, yeah, his only weapon, one of his only targets. He, mm-hmm. uh, he, he just kept throwing the ball in his direction. He obviously had a great game. Um, he, and, you know, Niners have struggled so far this season, but I think mm-hmm. he could be a bright spot. Yeah, I mean, we all thought Ayuk was the number one option going into that game. Obviously, Debo Samuel and George Kittle hurt, but this guy kind of just came out of nowhere. He was a big part in that Super Bowl game. Unfortunately, they lost, but I'm pretty sure he threw a touchdown pass to McCaffrey and caught one. So he's kind of like looking when the team is full healthy. He's the fourth option, but right now it looks like he's the number one and just an amazing performance from him. And then we have Saquon Barkley second. He had 17 carries for 147 yards and two touchdowns. What's your opinion on that game? Yeah, I mean, you look at the carries to yards and just 8.6 yards per carry is unheard of. That's just insane. That means after two carries, he's pretty much getting a first down. But he had some big runs, two touchdowns, and he ended up putting the team on his back versus the Saints and winning them that game. Definitely, definitely. Um, our third best player of the week, Josh Allen, 76% completion percentage, 263 yards, four touchdowns, and 142 quarterback rating. Not to mention, he barely threw the ball in the second half, similarly to the game versus the Dolphins. What are your thoughts on his performance? I mean, yeah, all four touchdowns came in the first half. And I, I, I remember going into halftime, and I just I remember feeling sorry mm-hmm. for, the, uh, for the Jaguars. Um, and and obviously, you know, he had a great game, and that's why he's possibly, you know, MVP front, ru- front runner right here. Yeah, I mean, he could do it through the air. He could do it on the ground, and he's just one of the best dual-threat quarterbacks we've ever seen. A bit of a surprise, our fourth best player, Andy Dalton. Definitely didn't expect him to be on this list, but, I mean, you could look at the stats. 319 passing yards, three touchdowns, 70% completion, and, again, he just brought this offense back to life. Yeah, and as we said before, like it was obviously the right decision putting mm-hmm. him in over Bryce Young. He's Bryce Young's obviously not ready yet, and I think having Andy Dalton kind of as a as a mentor for mm-hmm. him, it could be a big uh, a big factor to possible future success from him. Mm-hmm. And continuing with Panthers players, we have running back Chuba Hubbard, um, twenty one carries, one hundred and fourteen yards, with five point six yards per carry and some receiving work. He looked great too. He was kind of. Dalton, if he's ever under pressure, could just dump it off to him. And he was good of uh, receiving and rushing. What are your thoughts on his performance? I mean, he, I think, you know, he, had, he, he hasn't really been, uh, he hasn't had a, made a name for himself yet. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, this week could be a, a possible, like, starter for his career. Like, I mm-hmm. think he could definitely have a couple more good weeks after mm-hmm. this because you can't just rely on Andy Dalton yeah. to do everything every week. And it's going to make things interesting because they drafted Jonathan Brooks, obviously coming off an ACL who is on the IR, will come back most likely in week five. But, you know, if Chuba Hubbard continues to play good, they might be able to sideline Jonathan Brooks, let him become healthy, and they're going to have a really good running back room. And then finally we have Dallas Godert with 10 receptions, 170 yards, and 17 yards per catch. I mean, obviously he was, a big, he was also a big factor along with Saquon mm-hmm. in that Eagles win. What, what, were your, uh, what was your opinion on his performance? Yeah, I mean, we look at tight ends this year. Kelsey and Laporta just aren't them, aren't themselves. And right now, he looks like a top five tight end. You know, AJ Brown's out. He was able to fill in that role in 170 yards for a tight end. You don't see that too often. Yeah. So now we're gonna head into our last segment. Um, so the Bengals. You know, they have not looked like the Bengals we knew mm-hmm. from the past two three years. You know, they're collapsed. They're they're 0 and three. Their defense is horrible. Mm-hmm. Joe Burrow doesn't look the same. 
uh, do you think they can save their season? You think this is it? I think they could turn it around, but their chances of making the playoffs are slim to none. I mean, 0-3 start. The last I don't remember the last time a team went 0-3 and made the playoffs. I think there's only one time in NFL history. So, yes, they could turn it around, but, I mean, the, off- the offense looks good. The defense looks really bad, and I think that's what the problem is. Um, obviously, we see the Bengals kind of start off slow every year. Um, we don't know if it's a factor of Jamar Chase um, missing most of the preseason. But even versus the Commanders, he had a good game, and they still just couldn't do it. Yeah, I mean, they 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 made the Super Bowl. They they were obviously playoff contenders last mm-hmm. year, and you know this year not the same, not the same mm-hmm. team. And you know you just have to question, you know, what moves they're going to make midseason if they want to mm-hmm. make some trades, you know. Yeah, and I also wonder if it has to do with you know T Higgins uh, being out for the start of the season, and then. The cornerbacks really looking towards Jamar Chase, maybe doubling him. But even with a good Jamar Chase game, like we saw, two touchdowns, over 100 receiving yards, they just still couldn't get it done. And, you know, Jaden Daniels had a great game versus them. The defense, they just really got to fix it. So I'm Jake Goodman. And I'm Michael Cantilli. And thank you for watching this week's episode of No Overtime.